Hi, my name is Katie Cantrell, and I'm the founder of the Factory Farming Awareness Coalition, a nonprofit dedicated to creating a more just, compassionate, and sustainable food system. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to explain three different ways that our food system threatens to destroy society as we know it, and three ways that we, as individuals, can help fix it. The packaging on food products shows rolling green pastures and happy animals, but 99% of animal products come from factory farms, where corporations raise as many animals in as small a space as possible. Cramming tens of thousands of animals together in warehouses and feedlots produces lots of cheap meat, but it also risks our lives. The first threat is one that we've all unfortunately experienced firsthand, pandemics. As we know all too well, pandemics are extremely disruptive and deadly. If you tried to create the perfect breeding ground for a pandemic, it might look like a factory farm. You have tens of thousands of stressed out animals with weakened immune systems crammed together in their own filth, making it easier for bacteria and viruses to spread from animal to animal. Workers then come into direct contact with these sick animals. Diseases that spread from animals to humans are known as zoonotic diseases. 60% of infectious diseases in humans started in animals and then spread to people. COVID-19 is an example of a zoonotic disease. Scientists believe it originated in bats, then spread to pangolins, and then to humans. This transmission might have happened in a live animal market in China, where farmed and wild animals are sold for food. We have live animal markets in the US as well, though there are campaigns to shut them down. Slaughterhouses are hot spots for COVID-19. As of August 2020, over 28,000 slaughterhouse workers have contracted COVID and over 100 have died. Slaughterhouse and factory farm workers are also at risk of getting other diseases, such as staph infections, from the animals and their waste. Local communities are also exposed to dangerous germs when animals' bacteria-infested feces leaches into groundwater and is sprayed into the air. The 2008 swine flu pandemic that sickened 60 million people in the U.S. and killed up to 500,000 people globally may have started a Smithfield pig breeding facility in Mexico. Patient Zero, the first known person to be infected, was a little boy who lived in the town downwind of the Smithfield pig facilities. From there, the disease spread around the world. Scientists now warn of a new strain of swine flu on pig farms in China that has pandemic potential. Even scarier is avian flu. Some strains only affect birds, both farmed birds like chickens, turkeys, and geese, as well as wild birds. Since 2003, over 400 million birds have been killed in attempts to contain avian flu outbreaks on poultry farms. Some strains of avian flu can jump from birds to humans. The most dangerous type, H5N1, is 120 times more deadly than COVID-19. COVID-19 currently has an estimated mortality rate of about 0.5%. So if 200 people get COVID, one will die. If 200 people were infected with the worst strain of avian flu, 120 of them would die. Right now, avian flu doesn't spread easily from person to person, but scientists are terrified that it will mutate to become highly contagious. If that happens, it could kill up to 150 million people. Look how disruptive COVID-19 has been, and as of August 2020, it's killed less than a million people worldwide. Ironically, in order to try to prevent the spread of bacteria on factory farms, corporations have created a second major threat to our society, antibiotic-resistant bacteria, or superbugs. In order to keep animals from getting sick in the filthy conditions on factory farms, they're fed antibiotics. Antibiotics also make animals grow faster, so corporations make more money. About 80% of all antibiotics in the U.S. are fed to animals on factory farms. Anytime you give antibiotics, only the strongest bacteria survive, so the more you use antibiotics, the more likely you are to end up with bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics, aka superbugs. The World Health Organization cites antibiotic resistance as one of the greatest threats to global health. Usually, if you have strep throat or an ear infection, you can just get a prescription for antibiotics to kill off the bacteria. Imagine if we didn't have effective antibiotics anymore. Routine infections could be deadly. Already, over 35,000 Americans die annually of antibiotic-resistant infections, and that number goes up every year. One way superbugs spread to consumers is through meat sold at supermarkets. Consumer reports found that 100% of all hamburger meat they tested had bacteria that indicated fecal matter contamination. Meat tainted with antibiotic-resistant bacteria sickens nearly 50 million Americans every year, and it also poses a threat to society as a whole if we can no longer rely on antibiotics as a cornerstone of modern medicine. 
Before we get to solutions, I want to talk about one final way that factory farms are endangering our lives, climate change. There are nearly 10 billion farmed animals raised in the U.S. and over 60 billion worldwide. All of these animals eat huge amounts of feed and release huge amounts of greenhouse gases. Over a quarter of all land on the entire planet is currently being used to raise livestock. Forests have to be cut down in order to clear land to feed these billions and billions of animals. In fact, meat production is the leading cause of the Amazon rainforest forests being cut down. Turning forests into feedlots endangers wildlife when their habitat is destroyed and actually increases the threat of pandemics. As we've discussed, most new diseases are zoonotic, passed from animals to humans. Deforestation pushes wildlife into more populated areas, making it more likely that we'll catch new diseases. Deforestation is also a double whammy for climate change. Forests absorb carbon dioxide, so by cutting down forests, we're speeding up climate change. And the livestock that are replacing forests create additional greenhouse gases that are even worse than carbon dioxide. If cows had their own country, they would be the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases after China and the United States. Climate change threatens human civilization in many ways, from droughts and fires and floods to mass die-offs of plants and animals. Climate change also causes the spread of disease. Shorter winters allow vectors of zoonotic diseases like ticks to live longer, and warmer climates allow tropical diseases like West Nile virus and Zika to move north. We've heard a lot of bad news, so what's the good news? We can all take easy and immediate action to stop these disasters. The single most effective thing we can do on a daily basis is to eat more plant-based foods. If there's less demand for meat, corporations will breed and kill fewer animals, which means fewer factory farms and less risk of pandemics and climate change. Eating more plant-based foods also decreases your risk of heart disease, obesity, cancer, and diabetes, all of which are major risk factors for dying of COVID-19. So you can increase your odds of surviving the current pandemic and help prevent the next pandemic. It's easy to join the millions of Americans eating more plant-based foods. It's as simple as swapping out veggie burritos for beef burritos or veggie burgers for hamburgers. Start with one meal a day day, then increase the amount of plant-based foods you eat as you discover new products and recipes you love. Change is already happening. Some dairy companies have switched from producing cow milk to producing almond and oat milk. Fast food restaurants are adding plant-based options to their menus, and even the world's largest meat companies are starting to pivot towards plant-based protein. You can also help make change by sharing this information with your friends and family. Post pics of your Insta-worthy meals, Share recipes, articles, and videos like this one. You can also support legislative change. Cory Booker and Elizabeth Warren introduced a bill to end factory farming by 2040. Call or write to your representatives and ask them to co-sponsor the bill. As COVID has shown us, huge changes that seemed impossible can actually happen very quickly. If we can shut down society, transition school and work from in-person to online, and have thousands of scientists from all around the world working together to find a cure for COVID, we can fix our food system. It's easy to feel helpless in these uncertain times, but we have control over our food choices. Changing the way we eat is one of the most powerful ways that we can help protect our families, our communities, and all life on Earth. Please visit www.ffacoalition.org for more resources, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at FFA Coalition. Thank you.